Hello and welcome to the Berkshire Football Stories chat podcast with me, Rob Davis, Tom Canning. Hello. And unfortunately, Abby's not able to join us this week, but stepping into a breach is Bob Bacon. Bob, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you very much. Good morning. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a little while since we got the chance to spoke to you. How have things been for you over the last couple of months uh, since we last had a chat? Well, still been following Binfield, been up to a few games, was there last night to watch the fog rolling in across the oh, yeah. uh, across the meadow and uh, hoping the game wasn't going to be called off. But it was a good night, cold night, but uh, disappointing result for Binfield, I guess. But uh, mm-hmm. fashion was much improved over the last few weeks. Yeah, very Definitely. much so. One of the uh, form teams in the league there, although Binfield are going quite well themselves. Um, and the addition of Connor Lynch recently seems to have... Uh, Seems to have reinvigorated them. They've got a bit more of a focal point up front. Well, he, he scored five goals in four games now. His second goal last night was was magnificent. His, his run into the box, his timing of his run really caused Thatcher all sorts of problems. Uh, and he, he does well for a little lad. And that's not being disrespectful <laughs> to Brilliant. Well, um, both Thatcher and Benfield, as we mentioned, going very well in the Isthmian uh, Division 1 South Central. But... Uh, Today, we're going to start with a talk about Ascot in the FA Vars because they are through to the quarterfinals uh, for only the second time in their history. A uh, pretty incredible result there. Uh, Tom, we'll start with you. They, yeah, they um, uh, should mention they won 1 0 away at uh, Bridgewater <laughs> United. They uh, give the actual result before I let you uh, go on. So, yeah, <laughs> because you, you know full well I don't know what the result was. Um, <laughs> No, I, I joke. Um, no, it was a late. It was a late win, wasn't it? Um, they they left it late. It looked. I, I kept an eye. It was nil 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 nil, and I was like, "Oh come on, this can't be." I must admit, I didn't keep an eye on the trophy scores, and I was I was in a bit of a hump when uh, when I saw all, all three trophy scores. Um, but I, I certainly, uh, yeah, Ascot getting through. Um, you know, they're 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 odds on now, aren't they? They're I think they're favourites. Uh, yeah. And they've they've avoided uh, they've avoided a trip to Newport Pagnell, the the host, the uh, the holders, which is uh, as much as I think we'd like to see that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if we necessarily want to see that um, sort of so far. So uh, yeah, great result. Um, you know they keep on rolling. Uh, I did wonder if their league four might take a little bit of a a little bit of a dive. Um, it hasn't. They won again last night as well on Tuesday night. So um, you know it's they they keep on rolling. They keep adding just a little bit of quality every so often, don't they? As well, mm. keep picking up a player mm. here and there. Um, they've obviously lost Ollie Harris and Bob. You're, you're familiar with with Ollie, yeah. um, smashing little player. Ollie is he's been out for he's been out for a while already. But they've they've just been able to add. Bits here, bits there, but the play is it almost as well. The, the players they started the season with are, are, are really, really stepping up as well. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, it's it's that, that you know, it's fantastic. They keep on rolling, and and you know, maybe maybe we've got another Wembley trip in us. It would be uh, it would be nice, and it, it's nice to kind of it, it's funny, isn't it? You go, you've been we've been going years and years and years with with the Vars never even touching. But the, but the South, let alone Berkshire, yeah. uh, for for a variety of reasons, which are probably too long and and detailed to go into, uh, and then suddenly, suddenly, it's the you know the the Vars is a phenomenal a phenomenal tournament, and and I'm 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 delighted that there's another club. You know, we we did all right last year. We had, you know you had Wallingford and, and Barks County went well, and and obviously didn't didn't quite you know the, you know a step six clubs. They were they, you know the, the likelihood of them making it all the way uh, was was low, but you know they you know Asker step five top of a top of division. They should they are where they should be. Mm, absolutely, yeah, it's an, it, that's a, that's a great result for Ascot, and uh, well done to them. I mean, I think they've this season they've used their squad very well, um, good management and a good setup as well. So uh, to come away from Bridgewater with a with, with a win would, would be great. And, it, and you know, quite frankly, it doesn't matter if you score in the first minute or the ninety second, does it really? <laughs> But there's some interesting teams in there. I mean, Newport are, are at home against Atherston. Uh, Atherston mm. is up in my neck of the woods, and they're a decent side as well. And uh, and I know from uh, when Binfield played Newport Pagnell in, I think two years out of three, played them in the in the FA Vars, and Newport Pagnell are a stern opposition. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Well, as we as you mentioned, Tom, current holders Newport Pagnell. Um, actually, Ascot and Newport Pagnell are joint favourites. So I checked the odds before right. we came on. So they played. <laughs> They're joint favourites of the competition and Ascot being drawn away to West Didsbury and Chalton, which is up near Manchester. So a bit of a long trip, but I mean, uh, 
we've got the perfect person to talk about uh, long trips in the FA Vars here, <laughs> considering the uh, Binfield's run to the final. Yeah. So, uh, how will that? How do you see the um, the long trip element of the fixture pl- um, playing out? Is it a big hindrance to Ascot, or is it something that can galvanise the team? I, it'll pull the team together. I think it's a bit unfair that the FA have made them play two teams at the same time. But um, <laughs> it's a great joke. Yeah, that's, I think that's a bit unfair. Uh, no, the, 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 those trips are, are priceless. Um, you um, you know they've had. I know that they got all the way to Bridgewater or Bristol, and then had to turn back the first time, and mm. uh, that that will pull the team together. You know, the management know exactly what they're doing. Uh, and the players will thrive on it, and you know if it's a day out or a, a, an overnight, whatever it is, it will it will galvanise the players, will pull them all together, and um, uh, I, I expect them to get the re- get the result there. Very good. Yeah. So they, as we mentioned, their favourites for this fixture. Obviously, the long um, long distance element might play a factor, but yeah, this being the first uh, level of the competition where. Um, the draw is nationalised. I it's not it's not done in separate regions. Meant that a draw like this was possible. So, yeah. you know, they're quite good fun. I think the away days. I mean, they're big events for a club as well as as well as because um, normally you play teams in either the south or regionalised to have a big day out in Manchester for the fans as well. What does it mean for yeah. like the club in general? Um, well, well, you know, for the fans and, and everybody associated with it, it's brilliant. I mean, Neil Graham and I travel to every away game together in the car and it mm-hmm. was just brilliant i mean the, the camaraderie that you get through that the insight you get on how different people see things and think things is it is fantastic and then you often see the same supporters and they all seem to gel together and it becomes like a comes a bit like a family day out in all honesty yeah absolutely and so yeah those that fixture on uh saturday the 11th of march uh up in near Manchester, so any Ascot fans or any Berkshire football fans wanting a big day out, and uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't have chosen a better location. I think Manchester's yes. a great place to go. I just wanted to um, just something on like just thinking of it from the the West Didsbury and Chilton point of view, um, and and their fans. None of them will have ever heard of Ascot United. I suspect in the same <laughs> way that most Ascot United fans will have never heard of West Didsbury and Chilton FC, but. That I, and I've been on a few couple of these away days myself. The fact that it's a you know that won't matter because because often we think oh you get a big crowd and we'll have Dan Dan Walkley's on in a bit to talk about Bournemouth going to Tadley and and the big crowd that a professional side brings and we see that in the county cups here as well. But the Vars is different, isn't it? It doesn't matter that mm-hmm. it's, that you've never heard of Ascot United. It's no. the Vars. They're they're two three games from Wembley. Yeah. The crowd. Will will turn up and 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 that and that I think, I think that is why I think that's maybe why I just I love the Vars because it just the, these clubs some of these clubs will maybe get 80, 90 people and, and maybe not you know Ascot don't get eighty or ninety people I'm sure West Didbury don't get it but, but a lot of these clubs at this step five level get minimal crowds and yet you put a little run together in the FA Vars which is a competition most people probably go uh, don't don't really but but suddenly. You've got a crowd, and and obviously, Bob, you never, unfortunately, you never got to quite experience this at Binfield, did you? Due to no. a, a COVID and B, um, uh, drawn away the whole time. Drawing away all the time. Yeah. So, so you know, it, it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and I and I and I and I really just I look forward to to the, to those those West Didgeridoo yeah. supporters that just having a massive crowd at their ground. That is that is yeah. amazing. Although, although on our trips away, I think we had quite a lot of um, uh, people involved in uh, dressing room layouts and stuff like that to get. Yes, to get them. yeah. And, yeah. And certainly, when we went to uh, to Portsmouth, uh, they seemed to have. Yeah. Um, yeah, they seemed to ignore all the COVID rules. <laughs> <laughs> well. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, luckily, we're not um, subjected to any of them anymore. So. No. Anyone wanted to go up on the 11th of March, heartily recommend it and uh, yeah. get behind Ascot. And hopefully we can have another Berkshire side in a uh, Wembley final come May. Um, that, for- would, that would be good. Rob, you uh, were one of those backroom staff, weren't you, at one point? For, for uh, well, I, went, I went along to report on the semi-final, yes, uh, yeah. Portsmouth. So <laughs> that was great. And I can echo yeah. what Bob said. There seemed to be quite a few, uh, yeah, uh, Backroom staff on the Portsmouth side of things that uh, <laughs> enjoy, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Stanford, exactly. 
But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we won't be seeing anyone in the final, in the Wembley final uh, yeah. on the trophy side uh, from Berkshire because we had three sides coming into the last 16. And unfortunately, all three sides were um, knocked out. Uh, the uh, probably Ascot, uh, sorry, uh, Bracknell facing Altrincham was probably the uh, uh, biggest fixture, maybe, or certainly the biggest discrepancy. Bracknell being the only. Um, uh, step three side still left in the competition at this stage. So done incredibly well to get that far um, and coming up against a, a decent National League side. Uh, another big day for uh, Brecknell hosting, hosting a National League side again. And, um, and unfortunately the result didn't go their way. 3-1 they ended up losing. Um, and we should also mention that Maidenhead went out on penalties to Halifax yeah. and Hungerford lost to uh, Staley Bridge Celtic. Uh, yeah. Uh, three two, I believe that one was. So three home fixtures. It was quite hopeful, but unfortunately, three defeats at the end. Um, did you see any of the fixtures over the uh, weekend, Bob? No, I didn't. I didn't see any of those fixtures. I watched. I watched the results. I I did have an exchange with uh, Cole Withers and uh, uh, mm. congratulating him uh, about getting to play Altrincham. And he said, that it, it, I think his comments was, "We quite like these FA competitions, don't we?" Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I, I really wanted them to to, uh, to pull that one out of the bag. But you know, Altrincham, they're they're, they're a good side. You know, that they, they, they'll be physical, they'll be strong. And, and it's the same with the other guys as well. They're playing very, very strong and physical sides as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, as you mentioned with Ascot, the uh, the cup run not affecting their league form. So too with Bracknell. Um, they won again last night, another yep. uh, 1-0 victory. They're up to fourth now, um, well in the playoff positions and with still with games in hand over the teams around them. Uh, they're, they're looking good for a playoff, at least a playoff place come the end of the season. Uh, up, do you want to, as we've got you here, Bob, why don't you comment on the job that uh, uh, Carl and JB have done since mo- uh, going over to Bracknell? Oh, bloody awful, really. This. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, right, sorry, Dodd, sorry, Wiz. Um, th- no, they're, they're doing a great job. I mean, they know how to motivate the players, don't they? They know how to get the players in the right place, playing at the right time, and, and that's that's a, that's a, a skill. And that's why I think at some point they'll be managing a lot higher. I, I really do. I think they, they've got all the, they've got the capability and the capacity and the attitude to do that. Uh, but Bratton will have had, you know, great season. Uh, they, they, they're, they're there by merit. It's not by accident, is it? You know, no, they're, they're no. playing well. They, you know, they're drawing crowds in. That they've got a lot of fan interest, and and that's all you can hope for. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Going well, and uh, long may it continue. And uh, also commiserations, obviously, to yeah. Maidenhead and Hungerford. Uh, would have been nice to have at least one Berkshire side through, but sadly wasn't to be. We'll uh, perhaps have to wait another year for the trophy. Tom, you look poised to say something then. Were you uh, no, about no, to chip I in? No, no, I was just thinking, um, so we obviously we didn't manage to do the podcast last week or the week before, and Neil Maskell has been eager to come on. Uh, mm-hmm. And talk about talk about bits and pieces. He's been a bit quiet this week, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I think I think I think Maidenhead had a real chance, and I, I don't think of of all the of all the teams to go out. I think it's I think it's a shame for Maidenhead yeah. um, that they that they didn't manage to get through because yes. you know they 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 seem to they seem to do stuff the right way. They rile up um, ex football league clubs, and and it's, it's brilliant <laughs> to see. And, and you know, I, I I've not I've not met Alan Devonshire. I don't know Alan Devonshire, but I just you know the way he gets that team every season, every season, um, just punching above their weight is 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 wonderful. Mm, absolutely, long may it continue. Uh, yes. But one. Uh, one team who have had some success this um, weekend and have actually been crowned league champions are Woodley United Ladies. Uh, Abby mentioned them uh, on a fantastic run a few weeks ago where they were not only winning, but almost concede- conceding next to no goals. Well, uh, weekend before last, they uh, travelled to third place Pennon uh, Tyler's Green, pulled off a 2-1 victory, and that left the big one this weekend going into the game. They were four points clear of Milton, with a uh, but Milton had a game in hand. Uh, Milton United versus uh, versus Woodley United, and Woodley came away with a two 0 victory to be crowned champions of the Southern Region Women's Division One North, and with that promotion to the Premier League. So they're playing fantastically well, and uh, promotion worthy recognition, promotion and championship worthy recognition for a fantastic campaign, Tom. 
Yeah, well, this was this was um, this was a, a, gr- a great result. And I think they lost to Milton in the reverse fixture earlier in the mm. season, so, which, um, narrowly, which was nar- narrowly lost that. Yeah. So this was never a, never a foregone conclusion. But they've just they took a they took a step down last season. But, but you know they took relegation last season, which I think is a is a tactic that they've that they've done before mm. when they just felt they weren't quite because it's it's a, they 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 get themselves together. They've got a, they've got a very solid squad. They've got a very similar squad. It, it does yeah. stay the same um, regularly. And uh, from season to season, and, and that can sometimes be a good thing and a bad thing. But, but you know, they've regrouped, they've gone for it, and, they, and they've gone, they've gone straight back up. I mean, we we talk a lot about the, um, especially when Abby's on, we talk a lot about the level, the different levels, the the the, the gap and the, and the ability levels um, between between some of the divisions. But but Woodley, I think they've got they've got a real good chance. They they had a couple of really good seasons in that Premier Division, and and hopefully. You know the momentum will now take them on again. Um, I, I don't know what the overall ambition of the club is, um, but I, you know, if they can then become a, a solid Premier Division side again, that would be great. And, and a couple of ding dong battles against Ascot United, they'll they'll enjoy that. And, yeah, and, and the fair play comes... to them. I mean, their, their defensive record this season has been mm. has been brilliant. And, <laughs> you know, as a, as a retired defender, you know, there's nothing better than a clean sheet, is there? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think and they've. You've... Go on, Sorry, carry man, go on. on. Go on. Go on. You go. I was just going to say, I think they've only conceded one goal for something like uh, yeah. uh, three months or something. It's uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, yeah, one goal. It, where, where is it? Oh, one goal since the end of October. So wow. you know they're they're absolutely wow. flying. You know, and that's in both cup. Oh, sorry, that's the in league form anyway. But uh, yeah, it's uh, what a record. You know, and be, so, I think. I think on FIB we went through uh, we went through about three weeks in a row of having a picture of one of the Haynes sisters on. Uh, Mm-hmm. On the front of the website, because you know one of them had scored four or, or a couple, and it was you know Molly and Molly and Nicole, um, that, and and, and I, they'll have to you'll have to forgive me. One of them was a goalkeeper for a little while, and I always get it I always get it wrong which one was the goalkeeper. But yeah, um, you know they've they've done they've done phenomenally well. So you know great great. I think they are our first promoted team this season. I believe so. yeah, yeah. First, a championship yeah. side. I think title winning yeah. side. So. So that's great. I might um, I might start a little a little article that starts to to lodge the the, the champions and the promoted sides. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully, there's many more to come. Um, and for, uh, yeah, well, going from a team that's doing fantastically well to a team that's uh, doing less well, shall we say? Um, we wanted to have a quick word about a team we haven't mentioned much this season because they've been sort of floating around mid table, but they've kind of drifted off. Uh, <laughs> falling towards the relegation zone in the last few weeks, and that's Windsor, who are currently in the combined counties uh, Premier Division North, but um, heading towards trouble, unfortunately. And uh, there's quite a lot of discontent at Windsor at the moment. Uh, fans have been uh, releasing statements about um, the current uh, leadership and the direction of the club. Uh, they don't seem very happy over at Stag Meadow, and the club has now responded as well with a statement of its own. Um, I don't have either of those statements to hand, so rather... shall I, I? I do. Shall I read them quickly? Okay. Go for it. Tom. Um, the, fir- the first one is from uh, Michael Gegg, who is a long-serving supporter, has written a book um, wearing the red and green about the history of Windsor and Eton FC. And coincidentally, uh, we have done a podcast with him, which should be out on Friday about the history of Windsor and Eton Football Club and what happened when that club sadly declined. They, they I think they, they ended up. Um, being wound up top of the league, which is which is fairly unusual. And anyway, um, Kevin uh, Michael wrote an open letter to the Windsor FC chairman Kevin Scott and said, uh, "Back in 2011, when Windsor and Eaton FC folded, we were all extremely grateful to you for giving the people of Windsor a club to support. In the last 11 years, we have won two county cups and enjoyed two long FA Vars runs. Your model of being a self-sustainable club has and always should be the right one." But in recent seasons, crowds, crowds have been reducing and this season performances on the pitch culminating in this week's defeat to Chalfont have shown that we are now a club who is not just who is just stagnating, who is not just stagnating, but going backwards at a rapid rate. In 11 years, we are no closer to getting out step five unless we count step six, where we are fast heading. There is no communication out of the club. There hasn't been a post on the club's Facebook account since July 2022. The sorry, excuse me, while I just change page, uh, the club's Twitter is as bland as it comes, and the website is rarely updated. We still have no lease, and the club has significant debts, albeit to you. What is the plan for turning this around? I feel so sorry for Mick Woodham, who must be at his wits' end. 
neighbouring clubs have all moved forward with their ambitions and we have no sign of any new investment. So is it now not the time to allow someone else to take over, someone who can bring fresh energy, build a relationship with the Crown, secure release and bring investment and new people into the club so we can compete once again at a level the town of Windsor deserves? Back in 2018, you publicly declared that you would never stand in the way of someone coming forward who might have the right qualifications to take the club forward and that would have that would have the club's best interests at heart. There is a link to a article on the Windsor Observer website um, there included. And former Windsor and Eaton captain and former Windsor FC manager Mark Cooper, a very successful businessman, has a robust plan that can move this club forward and clearly has all the right qualifications. He offered you a significant amount of money previously, which you declined. Is now the time to open conversations with him and, with him and his consortium. I am nearly finished. Um, we'll, while legally the club is owned by you, it's an asset of the community. Now is the time to do the right thing and give the town of Windsor the chance to rebuild a club that can once again compete with our prosperous neighbours at Arbour Park and York Road. People want to enjoy coming to Stag Meadow. We want to be able to dream, we want to have ambitions, and we want to have the belief that our dreams can come true. Sadly, despite your very best efforts, this will never happen unless the club has a change of ownership. After a significant reflection, I wholly endorse and give my backing to the Crown granting Elisa Mark and the youth set up. I think the majority of supporters will back the exciting plans of Mark, the youth teams and the Crown. Now is the time to do the right thing and invite Coops for constructive conversations. Michael Gigg. Shall I quickly read the... Um, so that was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, Shall I quickly read the response to that letter from Windsor FC? I think that's probably the right thing to do. Um, club response to Michael Gigg's open letter of 11 223. I had a long and positive telephone conversation with Michael Gegg yesterday evening in which we discussed the depth, uh, the in, discussed in depth the efforts being made by the club to resolve the outstanding lease situation with the Crown Estate, which is the key to unlocking the significant investment that is available to create a sustainable and progressive future. I've also reached out to Mark Cooper as Michael requested and have invited Mark to share his plans for the club. Independently of Mark, we are also in ongoing discussions with Windsor FC Youth on how we can best collaborate to achieve our respective goals and keep you posted as and when there is any significant progress to record. Kind regards, Kevin Stott. So that's where we stand. That's where we stand, yep. Unfortunately, as we say, Windsor sort of drifting towards the bottom of the table. They're on a seven-game losing run in the league and have been shipping a lot of goals. So have you, from the outsider's point of view, Bob, what do you make of the Windsor situation? Well, I think that the, funnily enough, I saw a, a, a man who will remain nameless, a Windsor supporter at Binfield last night. And uh, and I just looked at him and said, Windsor, what the heck? And he just simply went, shrugged his yeah. shoulders, you know, and, and, and didn't really pass any comment. It's, it's interesting that they're, they're very quiet on social media. Now, I'm, you know, social media is a, is a tool that we can use to our benefits and in good times and bad times. And I, sometimes a comment from the club just just putting something out there, something for the fans to look forward to, something for the fans to work towards is, is very beneficial. And and I'm not quite sure why they haven't done that. But it could be as simple as they don't have volunteers in order to be able to do that. You know, as we all know, all our clubs in this area work through volunteers. And um, I, I can't imagine that there isn't somebody of a, who's got the, the, the commensurate skill to, to deliver good social media, to start putting a, a positive, uh, I don't want to use the word spin, but, but give, a, give a positive message of what the club, club is doing, because it's a good club. You know, it's a good, very good manager. Um, this year, I don't recognise the players. And, and, and that's, uh, you know, at one point, you, you used to be able to look at, look at that side and see five or six players that you go, wow, look at him, look where, where he, you know, where he's come from. And, and I, don't, I don't think we've seen that this year, which is, must be very, very disappointing for those loyal supporters. And they are very loyal at Windsor. Yeah, very much so. I think the fact that uh, you saw a Windsor fan at the Binfield game last night when Windsor were playing in Reading might also perhaps yep. uh, point to uh, yeah. discontentment there. So, yeah. and, and he wasn't alone either. So there, there's several Windsor supporters there, which, you know, is doesn't feel right really no exactly exactly so hopefully they can find some resolution soon that will leave the club in a better place and leave the fans uh happy with the the direction the club is going because uh be sad to see windsor uh continue on their current trajectory and hopefully they can resolve that yeah. fairly soon agreed uh, Tom, are you going to do some ads this time? You sprung that on us last time. So before before we bring in our second guest, uh, do you want to do some advertising? Um, yes. Uh, so we're we finishing part one. Finishing part one. 
Good. There we go. That'll look good in an edit. Um, just really quickly, just some ads for uh, anybody watching this on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we are partnered with Curious Academy, which um, helps young people gain confidence and new digital skills. Um, go and have a look at their website. It's they are, they are a, The Curious Academy is based in Reading by Reading Station, so it's really handy. We're also partnered with Ticket Pass, um, who, are, who do ethical ticketing ethical ticketing um easy for me to say they are really really great uh yeah. there's an admin when you buy a ticket there is as usual an admin fee but they donate 50 percent of their admin fee to a charity of your choice all good rob all good brilliant okay well for those people who are listening to the podcast welcome back to part two um we will now be going at, looking into the fixtures uh, upcoming in the next week. And there's one pretty massive fixture on the horizon where Tadley Kaliva are hosting Bournemouth in the Hampshire Senior Cup. And we have the perfect person to talk to us about this fixture. Dan Walkley now joins us from Tadley Kaliva. Dan, thank you for uh, dialing in. Good morning. How you doing? Yeah, thank you. How are yeah. you feeling about the uh, fixture on Tuesday night? Uh, Bournemouth coming to town. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, obviously, it got postponed uh, last month, but it's given us a chance to uh, fine-tune our, our plans, sell some more tickets, which is great, get some sponsors on board. So, yeah, we're excited about it, definitely. Um, everything's in place now, so we're just hoping the weather holds out. And <laughs> there's no cold that comes through. Have you kept uh, the weather forecast down? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'd rather not know, to be honest. <laughs> um, but the the draw for the next round was also made um, last Thursday. So, should we beat Bournemouth? Um, <laughs> not, um, we'll be hosting Portsmouth um, at Barlow's Park. So, a big incentive again for us for us to uh, try and progress from this round. So, yeah, yeah, exciting times, exciting times. Absolutely. That's, um, have... go on, that's a mag- that's a magnificent fish carrot whatever you call it to dangle yeah, isn't it you yeah, could play portsmouth yeah. um, i know i know there's the, i know they're they're both in the opposite divisions but like drawing portsmouth that that's that's um that's incredible my my brother lives in portsmouth and i'll i'll be doing my very best to uh, entice him up for that one if uh, <laughs> if you guys make it I, be... I really hope you do yeah so i i think arguably it'd be a, a bigger pull for us um there's quite a few portsmouth fans <clears throat> around the area um one of our committee members, Dave, is he's a Portsmouth fan. He's from Portsmouth, um, and, and there's quite a few local people connected to the football club that are from Portsmouth who have moved up to work for AWE um, mm-hmm. in the past. So yeah, there's there's a local connection there as well, which would be nice. Brilliant. What sort of preparation have you had to do to get the uh, uh, ground ready or get uh, Barlow's ready in any way? The is ground's it- fine. Um, the, the ground, there's no issue with the ground. We've got all the facilities there. Um, the main thing was, well, we introduced Ticket Pass for the first time. Mm. Um, obviously, a sponsor for Football in Berkshire. So that's been a great success. Um, a really easy platform for the customers, or not the customers, the supporters to use, and obviously us as well uh, in the back end. So that's been a big plus. We've got um, a local food van coming in, local fish and chip van, <laughs> which Lovely. is always good so people can get some food on the day. Um, yeah, and then just preparations with getting volunteers for car parking, stewarding, um, people on the tickets, on the ticket gate and bits and pieces. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, we were pretty much ready. Uh, we were ready last last month. So, yeah, we're more than ready this time. Very good. Um, Roughly, I'm not sure you know already, but how many people are you expecting on Tuesday night? With a rough es- estimate. As of the when I gave the chairman, we'd sold 600 tickets. Wow. wow. Um, and we're expecting, obviously, an extra 50, 50 to 100 on the gate on the day. Mm. And to get people there. Up and there. So, yeah. I mean, that's actually blown our record at 196 when we had Truro in the first <laughs> round the FA Cup a few years ago. Um, so, yeah, very, very excited about that. And hopefully we can have some of those supporters hang around for the league games and games coming up. Um, yeah, hopefully it will just introduce more to local community and, and get people coming back, which would be great. So it's a great opportunity for us to showcase what we're about, um, both off and on the pitch, um, and try and bring the, the community together. Absolutely, yeah. 
Uh, do, do you know uh, many people coming up from Bournemouth for the game for the South Coast? Have you heard of I, any? I have no idea. Obviously, we've had to give um, the tickets out to families and and staff and bits and pieces. But in terms of support, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I know there's been a few I've seen on social media um, that are more local than Bournemouth, um, who are Cherries fans. So it would be good for them to come and experience Barlow's Park as well. Absolutely. Bob, did you want to say something there? You look poised like you were about to no, ask a question. I, I, you know, the fact that you've got 600 sold tickets, I, I, that's the big advantage of ticket pass, isn't it? You know where you are. You know what you've got to yeah. cater for. You know what you've got to do with your bar stock. You know what you've got to do with food. Um, yeah. Good Good luck with the car parking, though, Dan, because that's, <laughs> really, that's always hectic. Well, but what like, brilliant, yeah, that's brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, no, like you said, the advantage with ticket passes, we know up front what we need to do, what we need to get in. Um, we've had to book, obviously, additional toilets and those, those kinds of facilities, um, which people re- don't don't really think about. But, yeah, it's, um, it's a really positive move for us. Excellent. And I think we'll be looking to use it going forward as well, um, especially for bigger games like FA Cup next year, FA Vars next year. Um, and maybe some deals towards the end of the season as well. Brilliant. And Brilliant. just give us an a, a idea of what a gate like this would mean to a club like Tadley. What are you what are you going to essentially spend the money on? What what can it does it yeah, allow you to do? Massive. I mean, this is this it goes towards sustainability of the club. We're we're a self funded club. There's we have sponsors, but there's not a great deal of external investment. Um, so everything that we I essentially spend on whether it be players facilities travel um, match day costs including lights and bits and pieces um, all come self-generated from uh, fundraising a lot comes from the bar um, and the clubhouse um, which we hire out during the week to local uh, businesses for training classes and bits and pieces so the ticket sales and the income from the day is going to massively help help our sustainability um which is great. I mean, you, you can't uh, you can't really forecast an event like this and how much it's gonna it's gonna help us moving forward. Um, it's it's money there that we sometimes would find hard find hard to find, um, but it's great. It benefits us as a club. It benefits the community for people coming together for the local football club and obviously the players and staff. It's, it's massive for them. I don't think you're going to get many more games. At, at this magnitude for them so it's great yeah really good and can you get more out of the ticket money dan by using some money to as a, a, a as a damn payment if you like to to work with local authorities and the football football authorities to increase facilities and uh, make improvements and things like that yeah i mean that that's something that is being looked at um obviously i can't speak for the money people behind the scenes the chairman and the, and the treasurer and bits and pieces but yeah, I mean, we're always looking to improve the facilities, which will help us um, both corporately looking at hiring out the facilities for, like I said, local businesses and, and functions and bits and pieces like that. And also with, with pitch maintenance and and yeah. those kind of areas as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's huge. The, taking away from the actual game and, that, and, and its magnitude, everything else going on behind the scenes with it is is great for the football club and it's only going to help us build in the future incredible stuff well um one last thing how are the players feeling about it i mean you mentioned that everyone's got a bit buzzed there uh what have they been saying to you what have you uh what's the feel around the club in general yeah the feeling's buzzing obviously um we've had a few get we've had loads of games already this month <laughs> we've yeah. been playing tuesday saturday tuesday saturday so a lot of the focus has been on the league um I know the management want to try and break into top five, which is great. I mean, quite easily can do that. We're sitting in seventh now with some games in hand. We've had some great results. Um, we held Jersey to a nil-nil draw again last night, um, which was an inc- a great result. Um, but yeah, I think the main focus is firstly on Saturday, where we're away at Alton, um, which will be another huge test. But I think come Saturday night, the the, the uh, excitement and nerves will start to kick in, and everyone's going to be up for it, wanting wanting to be in that starting eleven and and prove to everyone what they can do in front of a big crowd. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think Brilliant. definitely come come Saturday night, Sunday, it'll be uh, it'll be full mm-hmm. focus on that. But yeah, for now, we just got to look forward to Alton on Saturday. Get plenty of ice packs in for those aching le- legs and muscles. Yeah. 
<laughs> get loads of wheelie bins in for ice bath. Yeah. Them all up. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I'm certainly going to be there on Tuesday. I'm very much looking forward to it. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll uh, be. I'm not sure if anyone else from Football and Box should go, but I'll certainly there'll be some I representation. I'm planning on. I'm planning oh, good. On. You might get the you know a, a group of us. Who knows? But the, <laughs> no, that'd be good. Yeah, that Absolutely. We're looking we'll forward to it. on the tannoy as well. So <laughs> <laughs> one of my many jobs Tuesday night. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, we're looking forward to it, and yeah, wishing you the best of luck, obviously, Dan, for that fixture and for Alton and the rest of the season as well. So yeah, good luck to Tadley and anyone wanting to uh, get down there, get onto Ticket Pass, or um, tickets are available on the day, but you know it sounds like it's going to be a busy one, so there might be a queue. So always good to get um, your tickets ahead yeah. of time on Ticket Pass there. So yeah, Dan, thank you very much for joining us. No pleasure. Thanks a lot. Cheers, guys. Well, um, we should uh, start looking ahead to some of the other fixtures of the um, over the weekend, and one of them in particular is uh, a standout for us because it's involving a couple of the teams that are right at the top, the Combined Counties Division One, and that is Sandhurst uh, versus Langley. Langley currently sitting top of the uh, Combined Counties Division One, Sandhurst in third, but Sandhurst with a lot of games in hand due to the uh, postponements and uh, obviously making it a bit harder ground sharing at uh, Bottom Meadow. Um, yeah, they don't get to play every every weekend, unfortunately. So they are uh, um, have many games in hand, and uh, probably still the favourites to go up with the automatic position. But uh, a Langley win at the weekend could um, dent any of those hopes. Uh, so, Bob, have you had a much of a chance to see Sandhurst or Langley this season? And have you no, been cast, ca- casting your eye over the uh, combined counties Div One at all? No, I think I think um, Sanders are, are in a good position, um, mm. but I, I I do worry that Langley will go there with some momentum behind them with the amount of games that they've been able to play. Yeah, and and I think if Langley win, that could put a you know put a bit of a dent in in Sanders. But you know, again, they're a good bunch. Of, they're a good bunch of players over there. They they they're doing well, but they just need to pull those games back in hand, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's at what point do uh, games in hand become a hindrance because you always want the points on the board but at the same time uh, currently Sandhurst are eight points behind Langley with seven games in hand so you think that they've uh, got enough there to make it up yeah. but obviously if you're playing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday as might be the case uh, come the end of the season yeah, that has got to be a hindrance. At so what point does it tip over to being a burden? Well it, 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 I guess it depends on injuries doesn't it? I mean mm. um you know, Binfield went to Guernsey on Saturday and lost both fullbacks in the first in the first thirty minutes. Oh wow! And all of a sudden, then you've lost all your shape and you've got to reorganise, which Binfield did last night. Um, and if that happens to Sanders, two or three critical injuries. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what strength they've got on their on the bench or or to come in, and that becomes quite you know. Uh, quite important, but that's that's spec- speculation, isn't it? You know, you, if you go through with not uh, we're not getting the injuries and suspension. You've got to think of suspensions as well at this time of year, because uh, of certainly as I saw last night, some of the, some of the referee likes to pull his card out quite quite quickly. I think sometimes, um, you know, that that could also have an impact. So the players have got to be a bit careful. Uh, the management will be cute anyway, um, but you know, the, Sanders should do it. But I think if Langley come away with three points on Saturday, that would put a bit of, that would put, add to the pressure for Sanders. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we should say that uh, Sandhurst are actually playing tonight as we're uh, recording on Wednesday. Uh, they're away at British Airways, um, so uh, they've got the uh, they've got a fixture before the weekend, um, so yeah. the gap could be reduced uh, by the time they kick off on Saturday. Uh, but yeah, we're always good to see a top of the table clash uh, between two Berkshire sides. Yeah. It's a very competitive division, that one. We've mentioned it before. Berks County are very much in the mix as well. They're in fourth, level on points with Sandhurst, but having yeah. played... Uh, five games more, and uh, teams like FC Deportivo Galicia um, have been going well all season. They're in second, uh, and uh, we've even got um, teams like Eversley in California and Woodley that are not too far outside the playoffs, but uh, mm. maybe just drifted away over the uh, the Christmas period due yeah. to perhaps lack of games or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 
it's a good level uh, step six this year for the Berkshire sides. I think uh, most of the teams there are quite competitive. Um, have you seen any uh, step six football in general at all, Bob, or has it been mainly Binfield for you? No, it's, it's been it's, it's it's been mainly Binfield this year for me. Um, mm-hmm. Step six, it's improved so much, hasn't it, over the last mm. five to ten years? Yeah, um, and the quality of player playing at that level. Um, the tactics are a bit sharper now, aren't they? As well, absolutely. And um, it, it can only it can only benefit the area. As, as you know, I'm I'm a big believer in 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 community, and I think that the commu- the football community around this area now is, is is pretty good, pretty strong. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, yeah, either well, Tom, you look like you're about to poison. Yeah, no, <laughs> I was just going to say it'd be. Um, a, a sh- we're all assuming Yateley United are going to go up. Um, mm. It was yeah. really interesting to see how they get on. Um, yeah. I think there's been there's been a couple of teams at step seven in the last couple of weeks. You know, they're talk, they're, they're, you see people banging on about a bottleneck at, um, at, at the top of the National League. Um, there's a there's a little bit of a bottleneck, isn't there, at, at step seven, and it's more to do with facilities than it is yeah. ability. Um, yeah. But you've you've got you've had, you've had you've had Finch who who have who have blown everybody away the last two years. Yately this year, um, Finch and, are still in and around there, and, and Burfield as well. Um, have been have been around uh, there or thereabouts again, um, so there's a little bottleneck. But but obviously only one can go up, and 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 you would assume that Yankee United, their facilities are there. They've got the team, the top of the league. Um, yeah. I take issue with their 20 game win in a row when one of them was a walkover. I, I take massive <laughs> issue with that. That's not that's not that's not 20 games win. That's not 20 wins in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, that's you know that's that's 19 wins and a walkover. Um, <laughs> anyway. So that's besides the point. They've probably, they've probably won since then, since that came out. But yeah, it'll be you. You would expect, whilst we all think, uh, I think that the step, the level's gone up at step six. You would expect them to go straight in and be right up there. You know, yeah. next season. Absolutely, yeah. And I think uh, uh, if they do get promoted, I know they applied last year, and the, uh, I don't think their facilities were quite up to scratch. They finished. No. I think they finished in the top five last year. So I think they did enough. Um, on the pitch to qualify just about, but uh, they're in a much better position this year. So should they go up? Uh, yeah, I'm sure they'll be more than comfortable at step six. You look at how Barks County have adapted and they've, you know, they had a very strong season last year, first season in step six, finished comfortably in mid table, And now they're up, uh, trying to uh, pushing for the playoffs at least. So good on them. Um, so yeah, apart from the uh, uh, Sandhurst versus Langley game, Tom, are there any t- uh, fixtures on Saturday that you uh, like the look of? Uh, I mean, I think um, I think I think Wallingford and Crowmarsh at home to Windsor is going to be yeah. an interesting mm. one. Um, Windsor, des- de- you know, their game was called off last night um, because of the fog, uh, as we, as we mentioned. They, you know, they need they need something, but Wallingford. Um, Rob, as we we saw last season, are, are no mugs and um, mm. and, yeah. and and they've actually they've come on they've come on quite strong after a slow start to the season. Um, so it, that will be really interesting. And, and going to Wallingford is no no easy no, no easy ride, is it? It's um it's a, I, I love going up there. So it's a it's just a little bit out of the way, and it's um yeah. You can if you if you I'd imagine if you timed it right, you could watch a bit of rugby, you could watch a bit of football. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a it's a cracking place, and, and those guys up there uh, have done a have done a have done a smashing job um, to 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 get to get where they are. And and, and I, I I must admit, I imagine Wallingford will be favourites for that one. Mm-hmm. I would yeah. say so. Yeah. I did I did speak to Mick Woodham last week, um, towards the end of last week. We're, we're going to do a big interview with Mick. Um, talking about Windsor football in general, um, and I know, uh, I know the, the frustration is 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 there, and, um, and he's he's you know he's committed certainly, but he's and he's he's doing he's doing the best he's doing the best with the with the situation with with Windsor football in in mind. So very good, uh, Bob. Is there any games on Saturday that uh, take uh, catch your eye? Is there anything in particular you'd? Uh... Highlight to well, listeners. I've, I've decided I'm going to have another family weekend this weekend, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm certainly looking forward to the uh, Guernsey game at uh, Binfield on uh, on Tuesday night coming yes. up. Because uh, I, I think um, from everything that I heard um, last night about the game at Guernsey, um, Binfield had four sh- good shots cleared off the line um, and were put Guernsey under a lot of pressure. And I think. Uh, Binfield will certainly be looking forward to uh, turning that that fixture result around on Tuesday night. 
Yeah, absolutely. So the, a couple of good, uh, a good option for Saturday, good option for Tuesday. And I'll probably yeah. just add one that's not actually in Berkshire, but uh, Ascot away at Flackwell Heath, another one of the teams that are right up towards the top end of the combined counties uh, yeah. division north. Um, Ascot winning that. I mean, they're already seven points clear at the moment with games in hand over their rivals. So they're looking at great, a great position. So uh, a win there against another rival. Uh and uh, they're they're looking really, really good for uh, the promo- the one promotion spot from the combined counties north at the end of the season. I think Flackwell's always been one of those places, Rob. That's always I've always thought is a difficult place to go. Oh you know, yeah, you've got that. Uh, you've got that. Dare I say, little dip in the pitch which catches teams <laughs> out. Um, but again, a, a good, a well-run club, uh, honest mm. people that run it, and and you know they, they, they've always been great opponents. Yeah, they're always they're always you know top off the table. You know, always yeah, yeah. hard to beat. They've always yeah. you know, whenever I look at them, they always seem to be on a good run and solid defensively. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Bob, I've got this. I've got this idea for a piece I want to write on. Um, it all stems from from Yashua Romeo at, at Thatcham, and uh, and and whenever whenever you saw a certain name on a team sheet, you knew you weren't going to get anything out of that team. That, that yep. you know, you knew you knew you were probably going home with a loss, and there were certain players that play, you know, that were around enough. So I'm not, I'm not going to reveal all right now. But what I, what I wanted to, the reason I bring this up is because Flackwell are that that team it, yeah. taking that same theme. Flackwell are that team, aren't they? You never beat Flackwell. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Teams do. I know they get beat, yeah. but 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 when you play Flackwell, you they're just that team. You never. It's never easy. You never, you know, it's never an easy ride. You're going to get a game there. Yeah. Consistently over the years, they have just been at it all the time. Yeah. We should mention that Flackwell are the only team to have beaten Ascot in the league this season, and they knocked That's them right. out. And they knocked them out of the league, uh, the box about it, uh, box right. of box cup as well. So, you know, uh, a tricky, a very tricky away day for Ascot this weekend. So, if anyone fancies a trip on the road, Flackwell's a great option. But we've also got some great games in Berkshire as well, and. For all the fixtures, head on over to www.footballbarkshire.co.uk and you can check out our fixtures and results page and every Berkshire team's fixture for the weekend will be there and you can uh, choose whichever one you fancy. Good, good. Okay, Tom, is there anything else you'd like to uh, mention before we get out of here? Um, No, it is Windsor month um, and we are doing a lot of stuff on Windsor and I've got about three or four articles to post um, before the end of the month, uh, we've also done a podcast, as I mentioned earlier, for the weekend, and we are due to sit down with Nick Woodham to talk about Windsor football. So look out for that hashtag Windsor Month for everything you you want on on Windsor football. It's not just Windsor FC; it's, it's looking at everything else around the area as well. Um, unfortunately, last week I just had too much work to do, my actual day to day work to to kind of follow up, which was massively frustrating. But we've got some really good stuff to come, so look out for that. Brilliant. Okay, and uh, well. There shouldn't be too much more to say uh, other than that then. So you can, is there anything you would like to add, Bob, before we leave? No, I'm happy, man. Very good. <laughs> like to hear it. Well, um, uh, thank you very much for listening again. Uh, and you can catch all of our outputs on either uh, the website, www.footballinbarkshire.co.uk. You can catch us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, which other platforms are we on? Facebook and yeah. YouTube. YouTube as well. Yes. So uh, just search for Football in Berkshire on all of those and you should see all of our content there. Uh, But for now, all that's left to say is, uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Tom Canning, for uh, your input as always. And thank you very much indeed to Bob Bacon for joining that very midget last night. It's always great to have you. And uh, it's goodbye for me. And thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.